Good morning. Where donde is usted? Chihuahua, Mexico. Welcome. Ay no, si lo vimos que cosa tan más bellísima. Bello, bello, bello. La ventana. La ventana. El arca. Ay, mira. ¿Cómo? Andrea. Lili. Some people are amazed at the beauty of the sunrise and the reflection there on the window of Ducanaltum. The pilgrims are picking up again. August was a little bit light. I mean, we still have pilgrims all the time, but now the groups are coming back more and more. Today we have a new switch in the readings uh, for the gospel reading. So, how many weekdays are in a year? Well, 365 days, 52 weeks, so 52 Sundays chopped off there. So, a little over 300. And so those 300 weekdays are used to read the, the gospel passages and since we read the passages of the passion in holy week and so forth then those are, are are not read in the ordinary time so we just got finished reading matthew right up to the passion and we had started the year with mark and now we read luke so we're back at the beginning of the public life in Nazareth, just so you can understand this big jump today. And the, it's the 22nd week of ordinary time, so it's two thirds of the way through. And we continue reading after many months reading the, the Old Testament, we are reading the letter of the Thessalonians, walking through it in a strong way, and Paul is addressing a big concern the community had, a worry, probably discussion, a debate, maybe even anxiety. They had expected Jesus to come back immediately. And some people were dying, so what happens then? Are they at a disadvantage if they won't be there when, when um, Jesus comes back? And so then this is occasion for understanding and opening up to the implications of the resurrection in our lives. And each time God's people are faced with new challenges of understanding, there's always a gift. to deal in discerning and prayer, in talking with one another. Right now in the Catholic Church, there's a big process going on of synodality, of understanding and living how the church 
works together. That everyone has a role to live that more profoundly, more deeply. And there are very significant meetings coming up next month in Rome. Time keeps moving, cultures keep moving and intersecting. And so there's always a challenge that we face new questions, new ethical questions, bioethical questions, high tech questions. In fact, if some of you are interested, just last week, I didn't get to read it, or in the last two weeks, there was a document issued by the Vatican on issues, ethical issues coming from artificial intelligence. That wasn't a question that would be a concern years ago. But now it's beginning to disrupt many industries as well. And I just noticed an article yesterday dealing with um, the implications in the film industry and Hollywood because with artificial intelligence it's probably going to put the work of screenwriters in crisis and many others many other areas of business just like when the tractors came there was less need for manual labor and the combine harvesters and and the trucks before that you needed a lot of donkeys and horses and their carts and their drivers and then the truck could bring 30 tons of material and then the trains so little by little as we go along in life for spiritual reasons for cultural reasons for technological developments all kinds of things new questions are raised and then we as believers turn to our faith for orientation on how to deal with them and how to orient our lives and so the church is growing just like Jesus did in wisdom, age, and grace through time, through the centuries. That's the law of the of culture of humanity. In the incarnation, Jesus went through the same whole process. And in that in fact, that's what we're seeing today in Nazareth. We're seeing the emergence of Jesus in his public life. And up to now, he was just another village family member looking like a carpenter behaving like a carpenter they figured his joseph was his dad so they he was a carpenter so he's the son of the carpenter he's the son of joseph he's our neighbor but now suddenly he's talking about the prophecies of isaiah being fulfilled in their hearing because he's reading them in the synagogue. And that's too much to stomach. That's just very difficult to deal with. And one solution is to take him to a place where they can eliminate him. Sometimes that's a temptation humanity faces when there's a challenge to power, to interests. the path of elimination of the other is followed. We have a, long, a lot to mature yet, don't we? A lot to grow, a lot to redeem in our lives. Yesterday, I saw a little video of uh, an area in our neighborhood at home in Ireland, which was posted by the bishop of our home diocese, Bishop Fenton, and I saw the lush green fields and I just made a comment that everything here is brown. 
All of the grasses are brown since May. So I just want to see that again and the cows are up there grazing. Some people might wonder what they're grazing, but the hard time here is the is the hot summer, late summer time for food stuff. But it's a similar process to what we would do on the farm: cut the grass and either make hay or silage. Just that nature does it here, so it's turned into dry grass by the sun and all the nutrients are still there so the cattle can can graze away to their heart's content so how do i deal with changes in my life how do i deal with new issues coming up do i turn to the faith do I read a passage of scripture and do I converse with other believers about the situation to gain light in order to deal with it? It will be a big issue. For many issues, things are already kind of figured out what you need to do, but sometimes there are new issues. That's a nice little action item. The problem in the family, suffering, an illness, a bereavement. Sometimes we're overtaken by events happening and find it hard to deal with them. And there we have great resource to turn to our faith and and work with that as we grow and seek. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Have a beautiful day on this. I'm not sure how your mornings are in your, <laughs> your situation, but here we can't complain. The more we get into September, the more enjoyable the weather gets here, typically. God bless you.